Welcome to Lee on Sea, a delightful historic seaside settlement situated on the northern coast of the Thames estuary, just a few miles along from the modern city of Southend on Sea. Once upon a time a small fishing village, Lee on Sea has since evolved into a modestly sized town. And on this walk around Lee on a gorgeous morning, we'll explore the captivating heritage of Old Lee as we uncover a legacy of fishing, smuggling and shipbuilding, this town notably being the place where the famous Mayflower ship was originally built, while we'll also venture up the hill towards the modern heart of Lee, home to the busy Broadway and the town's centuries-old parish church, where we'll find monuments dedicated to the people of Lee's heroic sacrifices in the two world wars, and the resting place of a local woman who lived to be more than 100 years old. All of that is to come as we take a tour of Leon Sea, but we begin down by the coast, looking out over the Thames estuary from the oldest part of town, simply known as Old Lee. Old Lee, as the name suggests, was the first settlement in this area, home to no more than a handful of small houses lived in by fishing families. In fact, according to the Doomsday Book, which was compiled in the late 11th century, Lee at the time was home to a mere five households. But that settlement was likely the beginning of 1,000 years of fishing activity in this area. Because as we can see from these fishing nets and the collection of boats moored in the town's small riverside harbour here, that historic local industry still takes place to this day. Historically, the most common form of fishing in Lee has been cockle fishing, the shallow, sandy waters of the Thames estuary proving perfect breeding grounds for the mollusks, which were dredged up from the riverbed by fishermen and then brought back to Lee to be cooked and sold on. Lee cockles are a famous delicacy that are renowned as some of the highest quality in the whole country. But it wasn't just the local mollusks that brought attention to this small fishing village over the centuries. Located on the northern shore of the Thames estuary, the point where the river that flows through London enters the sea, Lee has long been a point of great geographical significance, in part as a docking point on the main maritime trading route from Europe into London, and also as a place of strategic value in the face of attack from an enemy nation's navy. Lee on Sea was therefore one of the last bastions of defence before an enemy navy reached London, although today there's less in the way of military heritage to be found in this area. However, here we're looking at one of the old town's main landmarks, the Old Lee Boy, which historically floated out in the waters of the estuary a little further along the coast from here, in fact just a few hundred yards to the east of the mighty South End Pier. Since removed from the water and put on public display here, the Green Boy isn't the only one to be found at the entrance to the Old Town. Just here we find a large red boy, which actually never floated in the waters of the Thames estuary, but rather in the Wisbeach Channel of the Wash to the north of East Anglia. Today this red boy actually serves as the symbol of Cockle Row Spit, the name of a local brewery based here in Leon Sea, and which features the boy on the label of all its cans and bottles. The two boys bring a nice extra bit of seaside atmosphere to this point in Lee while the maritime-themed monuments don't stop there, because scattered about the pavement here, there also stands a collection of historic anchors, one of which has a rather interesting story behind it. This anchor is believed to be more than 140 years old, and it's thought to have once belonged to a Norwegian boat in the late 19th century, before having been recovered in the estuary waters just off Shoebriness, further down the coast in the 1990s. The anchor is also mounted on a circle of historic stones, possibly more than 500 years old, that were once part of Lee's historic Strand Wharf, which we'll visit later on in our walk. But just here we can see one of the most historic taverns in Old Lee, the Crooked Billet. Housed in a building dating from the late 16th century, it's understandable that the Crooked Billet is in need of a bit of TLC, as we can see today. But the pub remains in operation, as it has done for more than 160 years. The oldest pub on Old Lee's lengthy high street, the Crooked Billet began life as a private house, before it was converted in the mid-19th century into a club which was designed to help sick fishermen. That club was known as the Billet Club, 
But the pub that emerged from it came to be known as the Crooked Billet, the name referring to a type of boomerang-shaped tree branch, which has also since been extended to the name of this wharf, leading down into the water, which is known as the Billet Wharf. Altogether, the Crooked Billet has long had a major presence in the heart of Old Lee, and it's interestingly the only pub in this part of town not to be named after a maritime vessel, many more examples of which we'll see as we continue our walk through town. But as you can see from the benches lined up on the Billet Wharf, Leon Sea today is a place that's about much more than fishing. In fact, the Old Town is a hugely popular spot for days out for people from across Essex and East London. There's plenty to do on a day out in Lee, from taking a stroll along the seafront to sitting on the beach, but there's also a wealth of history to be discovered if you know where to look. Just here, for example, we find a small enclosure just off the high street, which marks the spot of the original spring that provided water to the people of Lee. Drawn from a natural supply located at the top of the hill on the street known as Rectory Grove, this spot was of vital importance to the residents of the Old Town, particularly as they began to fall on hard times in the late 18th and early 19th centuries. We mentioned earlier that Lee benefited centuries ago from its position on the main trading route into London via the Thames Estuary, as large ships docked here to offload goods. But over time, the harbour here began to silt up, making the waters too shallow for these large ships to pull into port leading many to bypass Lee, depriving the village of a major source of income. This led to a period of severe local decline through the 18th and 19th centuries. But as we can see today, Lee has developed itself into a splendid little seaside settlement once again, having fostered a durable tourist industry here down by the sea, alongside a bustling shopping sphere in the modern part of town further up the hill. In fact, not only is this town thoroughly popular among day-trippers looking for a bit of seaside atmosphere, but Leon Sea has actually been ranked in recent years as one of the very best places to live in the UK, with a high quality of life, a bustling community, and good links to both London and South End. Here in Old Lee, meanwhile, there's a wealth of pubs to enjoy, and here we've stumbled across the Peterboat. Originally founded back in the late 17th century, the Peterboat as we see it today is actually a little newer, as the original inn sadly burned down in a fire back in 1892. But in similar fashion to the Crooked Billet back down the high street, this pub was historically a popular meeting place for a club of fishermen in the 19th century, and the tavern takes its name from a small type of boat used by local fishermen in the waters off Lee, a Peterboat. The Peterboat's modern beer garden offers some lovely views of the sea, making it a nice place to sit down for a drink when in Lee. Although, if you're looking for something other than traditional pub fare, here there stands a delightful tea house, nestled away at the end of a row of cottages lining the high street. Now, as we mentioned at the start of our walk, Old Lee here was the earliest settlement in the area. But while fishing was very much the main local industry, over time, the population here came to engage in a number of other commercial activities. Here, for example, we're passing by the Old Foundry, today home to a cafe, but which was once upon a time a foundry, a small factory that produced metal products, some of which were likely used in the construction of boats, and others which were sold and taken away by ships heading into and out of London. As we know, Lee was once upon a time a major place of trade, but even after the harbour silted up, people were still bringing goods into England via this town, albeit not always in accordance with the law. In the late 18th and early 19th centuries, illegal smuggling was rampant in Leon Sea, and in order to get a handle on the practice, the government constructed this building in 1815, the old Customs House, where all people bringing goods into the country through Lee were required to undergo checks and pay the proper import duties. Now, the smuggling phenomenon was nothing unique to Lee. In fact, small coastal settlements all over Britain were rife with smuggling around the turn of the 19th century, as the government raised import duties to extreme levels to support the country's wars around the world. This inevitably pushed more and more people to turn to importing goods illegally. And before the customs house was built here in Lee, 
many of those smuggled goods would likely have entered the country right here, on the Strand Wharf. With a slipway providing access to dry land for boats docking on the historic seafront, the Strand Wharf has always been Lee's main public landing point. There are plenty of other wharfs which line the coast here, but this is the only public one in town. And over the years it's greeted not just smugglers, but also legitimate trading vessels bringing grains, fish and meat from around Britain to the local residents. In the 21st century, the Strand Wharf is less often a bustling centre of commerce. But having been nicely redeveloped in recent years, it's one of the best places to take in a view of the traditional scene of the Thames estuary with fishing boats peppered all along the Essex coastline here, and with the coast of Kent on the other side of the estuary just about visible in the distance. Back on land, the redeveloped Strand Wharf is also home to some traditional seafront cottages, known as Plums Cottages. Originally built all the way back in the 1850s, Plums Cottages were a typical house for a Lee fishing family. Although the building that we see here today sadly isn't the original dwelling, as that collapsed in the 1990s. The rebuilt cottages date to 2007, and they're now a part of Leon C's local heritage centre, so you can pop inside and explore the interior of a historic fisherman's cottage, restored to look much like it would have done nearly 200 years ago. This view of Plum's cottages on Strand Wharf is probably the closest that Leon C comes in the modern day to giving you the full experience of a traditional fishing village. But if you're looking to learn even more about the legacy of fishing here, as well as the rest of the town's captivating history, you certainly can't miss out on the main building of the Lee Heritage Centre, which is housed inside another historic local landmark. Standing just across the cobbles of the High Street from the old Customs House, this building dates back to around the 16th century, and it was once upon a time the town's smithy, the site of the local metal workers' workshop. However, the building has had plenty more uses over time as well, having started out life as a cottage, later being used as a venue for crushing cockles, and today of course being the home of the Lee Heritage Centre. Without the Heritage Centre, it's likely that the old smithy and Plum's cottages would have fallen into disrepair and even vanished forever. So they've played an important part in retaining the old world atmosphere of Old Lee, which is of course a major appeal to so many of the people who come to visit this town. On a pleasant morning like this, Lee is at its most tranquil. But at the height of summer, this historic seaside fishing village can also get pretty packed especially in and around the pubs of the High Street. Here we find the Old Smack, a curiously named pub with a long history. Originally located on the opposite side of the street, the pub began life as the house of one John Flower, a renowned local mariner. But later on in life it became a tavern simply known as the Smack, named after, you guessed it, a traditional type of fishing boat that was used off the coast here, particularly during the 19th century. It was in the 19th century, however, that the original smack was sadly demolished, as it had to make way for the new railway that passed through town on the line between London and South End. And as such, the pub was relocated just across the high street to its current position, overlooking the sea and neighboured by yet another pub, although the two are separated by this narrow alleyway, which gives us an atmospheric vista of the sea beyond. The smack's neighbour on the other side of this lane, then, is the Mayflower, which completes our set of maritime vessel-themed pub names. Although this one refers not to a type of local fishing boat, but the famous Mayflower ship, which carried the pilgrims across to the New World more than 400 years ago in 1620. The reason that the pub is named after the Mayflower is also rather interesting. It's thought that the Mayflower itself was actually built here in Lee during a period when the locals were also engaged in a thriving shipbuilding industry. The Mayflower is certainly the most famous vessel to come out of this Essex town, but it's far from the only one, as Lee shipbuilders in the late 16th and early 17th centuries also gave the world a number of trading ships and fishing vessels of all different shapes and sizes, the formerly deep waters of the natural harbour here providing the perfect place to conduct shipbuilding at the time. But as we know, Lee's importance sadly declined rapidly after the harbour silted up in the 18th century, 
and while fishing was able to sustain the few hundred people who'd come to live here by that period, Lee still remained a relatively isolated and undeveloped settlement. However, in 1854, the railways arrived into Lee, and the town's original train station was built just here to our left, in the building that's now used by the Lee Sailing Club. The railways were transformative for Lee's declining fortunes, because while they provided a new, faster link to London for fishermen selling their goods inland, they also began to bring people into town once again. And over the course of the 19th century, Lee's population began to skyrocket in size, growing by more than seven times from just over 500 people to more than 3,500 between 1801 and 1901. But as we now find ourselves on Lee's small sandy beach, it was the access provided by the railways which lit the spark of this town's historic tourist industry. And in the mid-Victorian period, local developers engaged in a feverish land grab as they sought to build new houses and facilities in the hills above this historic fishing village in an effort to turn Lee into one of the most exquisite seaside retreats within reach of London. In fact, at the time, Leon C was even promoted as a rival to the Italian city of Naples. And although the two are in all truth as far apart as can be, there was no denying the appeal of a stay by the sea here. The 19th century was a heyday for towns and villages all along Britain's coasts, as seaside holidays became a highly fashionable exercise for the upper classes who were initially tempted away from the country's sooty industrial cities to the fresh air and bracing waters of coastal settlements just like this. That was the birth of Lee's local tourist industry, and in the 21st century, Old Lee remains a highly popular spot for a day out by the sea. However, this historic fishing settlement is of course just one part of a much larger town in the modern day. So we're now going to make our way away from the seafront and Old Lee by crossing over the railway line and venturing up towards the heart of the modern town, which is situated on top of a relatively steep hill overlooking the estuary. Now, as we climb up over the footbridge across the train line, we mentioned that Lee's original station was located right here below us, but it was later replaced in 1934 by the current railway station, which is located about half a mile further down the line, that way. It's only about a five to ten minute walk from the modern station to the heart of the old town, and you can reach Lee on the train from Southend, Tilbury, and London's Fenchurch Street station. Although one thing that you might be very surprised to hear is that this seaside town was briefly a part of the London Underground too. Leon Sea is located a good 30 miles to the east of Charing Cross in the centre of London, but between 1910 and 1939, the station here was also featured as a stop on the Underground's District Line, which operated special seasonal services during the summer from the city out to the seaside. Lee was the first stop after the District Line's modern terminus at Upminster, but the seasonal trains actually ran all the way through to the centre of South End and this service was just one of a number of developments that transformed seaside holidays into a pursuit for the masses. As we mentioned, Leon C's tourist industry began life in the Victorian era as a tranquil seaside retreat for the wealthy. But in the early 20th century, that began to change, as the town became increasingly accessible to people of all different classes. For most, the major resort of South End, a few stops along, was the destination for a day beside the seaside. But many others got off the train at Lee, which soon began to balloon in size as more and more people began not just holidaying here, but moving to live here. Today, more than 20,000 people call Leon Sea home, and the vast majority of them live in the sprawling modern town that overlooks Old Lee and the sea which we'll find at the top of this steep but rather fetching pathway. This narrow alleyway is known as Church Hill, simply because it leads up the hill to the historic St Clement's Church, which is the oldest building in Lee outside of the Old Town. We'll talk more about the church when we reach the top of the hill, but this highly direct route between Old Lee and the modern town centre isn't just a good workout for the thighs because it also provides some absolutely gorgeous views back down towards the sea, with the fetching street lamps in the middle of the lane making this vista fit for a postcard. 
It's understandably tempting to spend all your time here exploring Old Lee. But if you have the time, it's well worth climbing up Church Hill to take in the views, and also to explore the shops and sights of the modern town. Today, this town of 20,000 people extends far back from the seafront, and it blends together with the urban sprawl surrounding South End. In fact, since 1913, Leon Sea has officially been a part of South End on Sea. That being said, this town has a rather distinct identity, and many local Lehman were actually rather unhappy with being absorbed into South End at the time. As just under a hundred years earlier, the locals here were outraged by the construction of the two mile long South End Pier in 1830, which they believed intruded on their fishing waters and could do their local industry great harm. But long, long before then, the most important landmark for Lee residents was this, the historic St Clement's Church. Believed to date from the late 15th or early 16th century, St Clement's is the oldest place of worship in the Lee area, although it was likely built on the site of an even older medieval chapel that may have been constructed as long ago as the 13th century. For a long time, this church has served not just as an important place of worship, but also a significant landmark, as the 80-foot tall tower that we can see here stands prominently over the surrounding area, and is easily visible to sailors and fishermen in boats out on the Thames estuary. And speaking of fishermen and their boats, just in the corner of St Clement's churchyard, we find a monument which pays tribute to the crucial role that Lee fishermen played in the Second World War. Specifically, the monument commemorates their heroic actions during the evacuation of Dunkirk in 1940, as fishermen from Leon Sea and similar fishing communities all along Britain's coasts hopped in their small boats and heroically hot-footed it across the channel towards Dunkirk, where they helped to pick up stranded soldiers and bring them back to safety here in Britain. Here just beside the Dunkirk Memorial is the town's First World War Memorial, commemorating the locals who lost their lives fighting between 1914 and 1918. While just here, down beside that, we find a truly remarkable grave. This is the Cutlass Tomb, so named after the intriguing cuts on top of the tomb, which are said to have been used by local gang members to sharpen their swords back in the 19th century. However, inside the tomb, there lies one Mary Ellis, a resident of Lee who, according to the inscription on her tomb, was born all the way back in 1490 and died in 1609. If you do the maths on that, then you'd realise that Mary Ellis died at the grand old age of 119 years old, an astonishing lifespan that would have seen her live through the entirety of the 16th century and the reign of every single Tudor monarch. It's difficult, in fact nigh on impossible, to find any other reliable sources confirming Mary Ellis's incredibly long lifespan. But given that the average lifespan in 16th century England was somewhere between 30 and 40 years old, we can imagine that something is afoot. Perhaps a younger person assumed Ellis's identity after her death, or maybe there was a simple mistake when carving the inscription. We'll likely never know. But as we now make our way out of the churchyard, there's something else that's rather strange about St Clement's that we haven't mentioned. Here, we find ourselves on the street known as Lee Hill, which is today lined by rows of beautiful 19th century villas that were built as accommodation for the wealthy Victorians who came from London to stay by the seaside in Lee. Of course, before the advent of the town's seaside industry, this area located on top of the hill wasn't a major centre of population. So that begs the question, why was the church built so far away from the historic heart of Old Lee? Well, although there seems to be nothing particularly unusual about the church's position beside the Broadway here, this being the main road that passes through the modern centre of Lee, historically, people living down by the sea would have had to walk up the hill, just as we've done, in order to go to worship. That might sound rather inconvenient at first, but the reason that the church was built up here is actually rather sensible, as this location provided greater protection to the town's most sacred building than if it were standing right on the coast. You'll see this kind of layout in historic fishing villages all over the country, because Leon C's position on the coast left it vulnerable to attack from foreign raiders during the medieval era, 
most likely coming from France. By locating the church out of harm's way up the top of this hill, it not only meant that the building would be less likely to be destroyed, but it also meant that the church could serve as a place of refuge for the people, should the seaside village be attacked, or worse, entirely burned down by raiders. Fortunately, it appears that such a devastating attack never came to haunt Leon C, and the church eventually came to serve as a nucleus for this, the modern town centre where the vast majority of Lee residents live. Now, as we mentioned, the modern town of Lee spreads out far beyond the area that we've explored on our walk so far, gradually blending with the south end suburbs of Chalkwell and Westcliff on Sea. And while there's plenty more to be found if you go exploring deeper into the streets of Lee, we are sadly coming towards the end of our walk around this riveting seaside town. But before we finish, we can't miss out on a quick stroll into the town centre's main park, known as the Lee Library Gardens. Laid out around the historic Lee Library, which was opened back in 1838 as more people began settling in this area, these delightful gardens are a wonderful oasis of greenery in the heart of a heavily built-up urban area. The park, however, is one of a number of delightful features that make Lee such a lovely place to visit, or even live. Remember that this town has been regularly ranked as one of the best places to live in the UK in the last few years. But even if you come to Lee just for a flying visit, you're sure to have a wonderful time, just as I hope you've done as we've taken a brief tour of the town's most historic landmarks and delved into its most captivating tales. Thank you so much for watching this video, I really hope you enjoyed it, and I hope you're now looking forward to visiting Lee on Sea for yourself sometime soon.